Mike, how excited are you guys for this uh, caravan, seeing the people out there and what their their excitement for the Orioles? Yeah, great day lined up. We're going to the uh, food bank today um, and then heading out to see our friends on the eastern shore this afternoon. So, um, you know, this is extra special because we haven't really been able to do this stuff for a couple of years. Um, we've got a, a high anticipation for spring training this year. Um, first of all, it's going to be a normal spring training, which we haven't had in a while, but also uh, we've got a real good team, real good roster, and um, we've got some hopes of uh, making the playoffs this year that um, you know this spring is going to be uh, really important for us. So I'm, I'm excited to get down there. I love Sarasota, and uh, this is a good ramp up for that. What business remains as far as putting this roster together? I think um, we're kind of in the mode of maybe taking advantage of opportunities. So um, there are quality free agents remaining. Um, you know, we're kind of um, staying in touch with them and, and monitoring, um, you know, what, what how their markets are looking. And if something um, seems like it'll boost our team, I think we're in a position to still make a move. Um, also, <clears throat> uh, keep in contact with other GMs on, um, you know, trade moves that they're doing. But I do feel like if we end up with this group and this NRI list, um, you know, in Sarasota in, in 10 days, um, we're fine with that. But we're still uh, pursuing opportunities on the market. Would you, would you like to add another left-handed hitting first baseman, or do you like the group of guys like O'Hearn and Diaz that you've brought in non-roster? Yeah, we've got a, a um, really um, numerous group off the roster right now. I think it'll be a really interesting competition as it currently stands um, for, for uh, one of the bigger competitions in camp. Um, that said, there are there are some players on the free agent market that still interest us, and it's just going to be a matter of kind of where that lands from a from a contract standpoint. Whether you know whether we'd want to jump in on it from a, from a competitive makeup, you know, of this team in terms of the division and you know the American League. You know, how, how does that kind of fuel your excitement for for the opening of spring training compared to to others? Well, you know, this is. Um, Honestly, the first spring training that I've been standing here openly talking about the playoffs, so I think that's a big deal. Um, you know, we knew we had uh, talent going into to last year, um, but the way that um, you know the team uh, materialized and congealed and, and just kind of clicked um, on, on a clubhouse level, you know, you just never know how that's going to go. Um, so we've been very um, strategic with everything we've done. We've been um, very consistent and deliberate, and now we're at a point where um, our focus has turned to, you know, getting getting into the postseason in October and, um, you know, very competitive league right now. So we're going to be in a battle with a lot of teams, both in our division and then, you know, in terms of if we're in a wild card race, there's a lot of good looking teams out there um, in other divisions. So I'm just uh, excited for the players, uh, for the coaching staff, and um, I like the, uh, the versatility and athleticism in this roster. Mike, uh, as you've noted, this isn't over yet. You guys still have some more work to do. But how do you feel like this offseason has gone in terms of boosting those playoff odds, the moves that you guys have been able to make? How do you feel like – what impact do you feel like those have been able to have for you guys? Yeah, I think the theme of um, the major league additions we've made, um, five big ones. I mean, there's been some players off the roster uh, that we've brought in, a lot of them. But five uh, guys on the roster is um, they've they've plugged holes and they've boosted and reinforced um, the internal talent that we have. I mean, we have two starting pitchers in uh, Cole Irvin and Kyle Gibson, who um, were among the leaders in innings uh, the last couple of years in the league. Also, quality starts. So these are guys that are going to help the rest of the pitching staff. we got a 13-man restriction now. That's a pretty important rule um, that's in place. Um, we Our bullpen was really, really good last year. Uh, but we reinforced that with uh, Mike Givens, who um, you know we all we all know, and, and you know who has a relationship with Baltimore fans already. And um, you know Adam Frazier coming in from the left side to a really good, really dynamic infield mix gives us another option at second base from the left side. He can also kind of spill out into the corner outfield. Um, and then uh, James McCann's a really high quality second catcher for us and just takes some pressure off of Adley and uh, provides an offensive threat from the catcher position. So um, I think that it's a statement to our internal talent that, that um, you know, we uh, feel like we have a lot of players both on the team and possibly joining the team soon um, that uh, will take steps forward. Um, and these veterans um, kind of stabilize that group for us. Mike, you talked about the potential of uh, the free agents like making 
advantage of a, of a potential deal. Um, and that's happened in the past in this organization with hitters, you know, one-year pillow deal kind of thing. Um, do you think that there's really legitimately a better chance or, or a chance anyway for that kind of deal with a pitcher now because of what happened last year as far as the, the ballpark and such? Um, I, I think it's much better. I, you know, I, um, I think we had, um, um, you know, like with Gibson, we had competition for him. Um, and you know he chose to come here. I, I don't. I don't think that happens um, too easily with the prior uh, dimensions, where this was like one of the homer homer prone ballparks in all of baseball. I thought it was a, a competitive disadvantage for the team. Um, and then hopefully going forward now, with the pitching program we have, the 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 size of the park and uh, the quality competitiveness of the team, that'll continue to be the case. But yeah, we're still um, keeping an eye on uh, major league free agent pitchers and position players too right now. Mike, you also look at the possibility of Mountcastle getting better rewarded for his at bats than he was a year ago. I mean, you just you know hit so many hard balls that were not uh, end up being hits or home runs. And Austin Hayes maybe having a full year. You know, we had a really good first half and then struggled with the second half, but was largely healthy. The possibility too of them on the rise added with all these other, you know, the, the young pieces that you have is that it's got kind of also what bolsters where you this, the mindset we're to the whole team right now for playoffs and, and beyond? Yeah, uh, um, Mount Castle and Hayes are right in there. They're going to be in the middle of our lineups. Um, two good quality right handed hitters, which uh, we need because a lot of our uh, other guys are left handed. Um, Mount Castle, in particular, you mentioned um, when we look at it uh, on paper, he had a very unlucky season. Um, I mean, I think a little bit of that was the, the dimensions of the wall, but he had blasted a lot of balls to center field both here and elsewhere that just didn't get out. He's still super young. Um, I think we all have hopes for maybe a huge season from him. Um, and to see uh, Austin get through a, a full major league season healthy like that and have a have a solid season, um, I think the next step for him is, is having a better second half. So I, I don't see any reason why he won't do that. Mike, how closely did what you got out of free agency and the, the trades match what you would, what you would map down at the end of the well, I think that um, you know you never know what to expect in terms of in terms of which personnel are coming your way, but the profiles of the players, the the roster spots, um, kind of clicked off our exact uh, wish list. I mean, there's still other other things that, um, like I said, we're, we're working on, but um, you know, we needed another catcher. We needed a couple of starting pitchers. It made sense to bring in a veteran reliever. Um, a, a, another left-handed true second baseman makes sense with the infield mix that we have. So I hope these guys uh, come in and have good seasons. Is there an update on John Means's recovery, and what is it realistic to expect from him this year? Nothing new, uh, thankfully, beyond what I've been saying. He had a, uh, he's having a very normal, very positive um, Tommy John rehab right now, and I think he could be back in our rotation on the early side in July. How do you anticipate building D.L. Hall up in spring training? Um, he's going to be in the um, rotation mix, um, so he'll be one of the competitors for the rotation. I see, I see 12 pitchers on the 40-man roster right now that will be uh, stretched out and competing for opening day rotation spots. So, um, you know, we want to revert to him as a starting pitcher. Um, it was kind of part of the plan to bring him up as a reliever, to give him a taste of the big leagues, to help uh, in the stretch, um, but also manage his innings and workloads last year. But the plan was always to go back to him um, starting because he's still got a lot of potential there. Mike, so follow up real quick. Candidates. Just to follow up on it. So if he, um, if he does not make the, the rotation, you would see him at AAA instead of in a bullpen that's more likely scenario? That part hasn't been decided. I mean, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I think we, we want to uh, toss him into the, um, the rotation competition in camp. You know, hopefully he wins one of those spots. Um, I, I, you know, I think we'll, we'll, we'll see what else is going on with the rest of the team um, if that ends up being the case. Mike, with 12 candidates, is a six-man rotation at all in consideration? Um, I don't know the answer to that. Um, you know, with the 13-man pitching staff, it, it, you know, it, it sort of – um, creates other problems uh, because your bullpen is doing so much work. I think that depends on the uh, off days and uh, things like that, and and maybe the the 
what the nature of the competition in camp shakes out like. Um, we've certainly tossed that idea around. I don't have an answer right now. We'll probably continue that conversation, but we're t talking more about a five-man rotation right now. Mike, as part of your job has been uh, sort of explaining the process to fans and the, the pain that can be a part of it, at least initially. At this point, as you've managed the pain, do you have to manage expectations for those who think now it just takes off? Are you all in on that? Well, I, part of that is based on uh, you know stuff I've been saying because I'm excited about the, the future of the team and the fact that I believe uh, you know that our rebuild is behind us and um, we've got an incredible uh, chance now to be a very very competitive team for years and it um, you know I think we're all excited about that. Um, so I, I think that the front office and the manager, when we talk to the media, we feed those expectations. But, um, you know, we also uh, live in the reality of our business. Um, we, you know, we approach things very carefully. Um, we have a lot of really smart and experienced people in our front office um, working on our plan. Um, and that includes growing the team over the next few years, managing our payroll, um, you know, trying to get into contracts that make sense for, for the long haul. Um, so, you know, we've got to navigate all those factors too. And it's something that I think, you know, a team like the Orioles in particular has to be careful about. So, um, you know, there's a lot to go, that goes into it. The bottom line is we want to do the best that we can in our situation and we want to win. And so um, everything that we've done going back to 2018 has, has been about getting us to that point. We're going to continue um, applying our know-how to take the next step. Mike, with the team in win-now mode, does it change how you handle player development and prospects and promotions from the last few years to what will happen now? Um, I think there will be maybe a little bit more. Um, you know, hopefully we're, we're in the mix this year and very competitive. And um, you, know, you might be faced with a little more of a trade-off where somebody can come up and um, help from AAA, um, maybe not be a full-time player, you know, maybe go into the bullpen. Um, and, you know, you, there's going to be more of a balance towards um, making uh, some decisions like that that could come a little bit at the expense of the player's development path but help the major league team. Like you've been very specific about um, you know, taking care of some of these young arms and making sure, you know, watching the innings and that kind of stuff. You also <clears> said <throat> that you would like to see Grayson Rodriguez on the opening day roster here. Um, how do the, those kind of those two things balance out? I mean, obviously, seventy some innings last year uh, overall. So, so what would you do if he gets to the uh, rotation? How would you manage him? Uh, it, it's a, a great question and an ongoing conversation that, that we're having. Um, this has been um, very tricky because of the calendar of the last few years with all the um, weird seasons in the majors and, or lack of seasons in the minors. Um, and it's, it's made this tough, and now we're in a mode where we want to get our best pitchers out there pitching as much as possible so we can win as many games as we can. Um, so I, you know, talking to our medical staff, uh, our pitching department, um, we got a lot of people involved in these conversations. I think it's going to be individualized. I think it's going to depend on a lot of circumstances. And uh, the phrase I would use is we're going to kind of bring our brains to it on a night to night, start to start basis. Um, but there are not um, hard and fast uh, limits that we're going to blanket across all the pitchers in our organization this year. Um, but we, you know, we're obviously um, his uh, health and uh, long term career. Um, is is going to be managed very carefully. Um, which five have been reported? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, there may be some updates on on some of that when players get into to camp, develop, d depending on their readiness. But that's that's the list. Yeah. Mike, how many of your five rotation spots would you consider up for grabs heading into spring training? Um, you know, I think it could look. I mean, we uh, Gibson and Irvin. Um, I, I I think with uh, their their uh, seasons the last few years and and the years they've um, put in. Um, are uh, firmly in the plans, um, and the, you know the rest of the guys either either weren't in the rotation last year or 
um, were, but only pitched 100 to 120 innings and were rookies. So anytime that's the case, I think you go back into spring training um, with uh, a, a competition to get into the rotation. So um, look, a lot of those guys had good seasons last year. I think they have inside tracks, um, but um, you know, it's uh, it's never set in stone until we, we get through camp. And um, you know, while that's a lot of open spots, like I said, I'm pleased with the fact that we've got basically 12 people on the 40-man roster that are going to be in that competition. And that seems like a real good number to pull from.